So here's an example of how you can take a rational function and write it as a power series. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is break this down into partial fractions. So we'll go ahead and I'll grab a different color so it kind of stands out. Let's find our partial fractions. The glare is just making me crazy today. Okay, so right, I have x plus 33 over how nice that it's factored for us. We don't have to remember how to factor. A over, right, so right, one fraction for each um, linear factor for the denominator. So each unique factor of the denominator, and since they're linear, that means my numerator um, that I'm going to find is going to be a constant. So I'm using just letters A and B. Remember, if you had an irreducible quadratic, then you'd have to do linear on top. Thankfully, we don't have to do that. Okay, so once we get here, we multiply through by the common denominator. What that does is right clear out the denominators and gives you x plus 33 is equal to a times x plus 5 plus b times x minus 9. Now, especially if you don't have it right nice and easy like this, where you just have um, just one, well, individual factors, you don't have anything squared anywhere, um, right, this pattern that you probably noticed as I, as I multiplied through by a common denominator is going to hold. You'll want to be careful if like one of these factors would have been squared because then, right, it's, it's a little bit different and you should look at a partial fraction video to figure out how to do that. So then I'm going to evaluate at different values of x to figure out what my a and b are. So I'll start with 9. That'll get rid of my b and tell me that. Be careful, you have to plug it in on the, the left side too. So now we have 9 plus 33 equals a times 9 plus 5 plus b times 0, right? So that goes away. So I'm going to get, oh my gosh, arithmetic. Um, I'll do this side first. 14a equals um, 42. Oh, that's nice. So divide by 14. So a is 3. So my a value is 3. Okay. And now we'll plug in a different x value and come up with the value for b. Right. Do you all see what we're going to plug in for x th this next time? Sure. Negative 5. So negative 5 plus 33 equals, and I'm going to try to scrunch it into this last little half inch of paper that I have. So I know my a is going away. So then my b is times negative 14. So negative 5 plus 33 is 27. Oh, subtraction. It's always my downfall. Negative uh, 14b. I'm just checking my division before. Now I'm going to check my subtraction. Okay, I guess I'm okay. So b is going to be, um, oh, 28. Yay, I knew I was wrong. 28. I, can sub I cannot subtract. I should have grabbed my calculator. Uh, 28 fourteenths, negative. So b is negative 2. Usually, if one of them's an integer, the other one's going to be an integer. Um, not always, right? It's not set in stone, I don't think. But um, I was just a little nervous that it wasn't going in nicely. OK, then that caused me to check my uh, arithmetic. All right, so what I just found, right, finally, is that x plus 33 over x minus 9 times x plus 5 is equivalent to 3 over x minus 9 plus, or minus, I'll do plus, negative 2 over x plus 5. Sweet. OK, now how do I go from here to writing a power series? Well, it takes a little work. So the thing we have to remember, so this is what we're going to write our power series on. So the thing I need to remember is our, kind of like our golden rule for power series. And that is the geometric series. Right, so 1 over 1 minus x equals right, the sum of x to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. Okay. Now, it's kind of, right, this is a great big step, right, to convince yourself. But remember, right, so just a little aside here, and then I'm going to grab a new piece of paper. So this is just a little aside. 
If you have a series, a r to the n from 0 to infinity, sorry, I got my stuff from before. If n is 0, that's a plus a r plus a r squared plus, right, a r cubed plus all of those things. You're going up by that constant ratio r. So r is that constant ratio. Makes this a geometric series. And the sum, the infinite sum of a geometric series is equal to your first term, a, over 1 minus r, as long as that constant ratio, or the absolute value of it, okay, so the absolute value of that constant ratio is less than 1. Now that said, if your series is alternating, so if it changes signs, that means your r is actually a negative value. And you're going to want to put that negative value down here in for r. So it would be 1 minus a negative. It will actually be a positive number on the denominator. OK? All right, so there's our, our oh, yeah, yeah, yeah part. So I'm going to grab another piece of paper. And we're going to go ahead and come up here and grab these two fractions. And we're going to try to manipulate them into being right our, our geometric series. OK, so um, I'm going to go one by one. So let's work on the 3 over x minus 9 first. And I'm trying to get it into that, where will that fit? 1 over 1 minus x equals the sum x to the n. OK, so I just want to have that kind of handy um, to look at. OK, so let's see. Um, first, I want to switch my order. So I've got 3 over negative 9 plus x. Um, what else do I want to do? I really need this to be a minus x, so I'm, and I need that to be a 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 3 ninths. So that'll leave behind 1 over. So when you do take out a negative sign, right, it changes both of these. So trust me on the algebra. I know you can't trust me on the subtraction. You can trust me on the algebra. 1 minus um, x over 9. If you're, you're not sure, go ahead and multiply the, the negative 3 ninths back through. Right, Make sure you get back where you were. You can move the negative sign down here with a 9 if you'd like. Okay. Well, gosh, that's looking a whole lot more like what I want over here. So I could write this fraction here. So think of that, so that'll be negative 1 third, because that's making me crazy, 1 over 1 minus x over 9. So you can think of this um, x over 9, right? This is our little u amount. Think of it as a, a little u sub, but we're doing it on the fly. So I have this negative 1 third out in front. And then I'm going to sum, right? So it fits my pattern. And now this x over 9 to the n is what I'm summing up, that u value, OK, and from 0 to infinity. OK, so that's how we do the x minus 9. So my other fraction, hopefully you're looking back there, is negative 2 over x plus 5. So we're going to do the same thing to that, right? And then we're going to have to add them together. So, um, so again, start by moving your x into the other position, negative 2 over 5 plus x. Um, so this time, I might do my algebra a little bit differently and multiply top and bottom by negative 1. Let's just see what that does for me. So now I've got 2 over uh, negative 5 minus x. Well, oh gosh, I guess that didn't really help me at all, did it? Um, let's see, I want the 2 to come out, and I want that 5 to be a 1. Um, bum, bum, bum. So 2... I know I'm going to need a 2 fifths. OK, I'm going to go back. I'm going to get rid of doing that negative 1 bit. Um, and I'm going to come back here to the negative 2 over 5 plus x. And I am going to factor out a negative f no. 
I'm going to factor, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor out a 5 from the bottom. Sorry, it takes me just a second. There we go. That's what I wanted. Negative 2 over 5 plus, right, so that'll get me back. So now I'm going to move the negative 2 fifths out. To do it in the right order, or it, 5, Angela, 1 over 1 plus x over 5. So now, right, now I've got a plus on the inside here, and, but I need it to be a minus, right? Look back up here, right? It needs to be 1 over 1 minus, and I've got 1 over 1 plus. So the way we figure that, the way we fix that is, um, I'll use the negative 2 fifths still out front, and now I'm going to have 1 over 1 minus a negative x over 5. Okay, <gasps> oh, getting close. So circling back, just thinking about what I've got there. So now I'm going to take this guy right here and write it as the sum, like we just did above, right? So now I have negative 2 fifths times the sum 1 over 1, sorry thinking too far ahead. Negative 2 fifths, I actually want to write the summation, and then it's negative x over 5 to the nth power. Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay, um, so now I'm going to mess with this just a little bit. Uh, negative 2 fifths summation, I'm going to grab that negative 1 and bring it out, and then I'll have x over 5 to the nth power starting at 0 uh, to infinity. OK, oh my gosh, that was a lot. So here is my second fraction and my first fraction. And now we're going to put them together. And it was, um, I guess we were adding that up because I have my negative 2 already taken care of. So we're going to try to add these together. So I have negative 1 3rd. Uh, n equals 0 to infinity, x over 9 to the n, plus negative 2 fifths summation, negative 1 up to the n to the n, x over 5 to the n from 0 to infinity. Now, I suppose if we wanted to, we could start writing out terms just to see how we could combine them. But I think that's a different video. I think I'm going to put a circle around this because this has been a long one.